The world's attention was on Britain as uh, we waited for that particular announcement that came in a couple of hours ago, touching on the Prince of Edinburgh, who is expected to step down from carrying out royal engagements. Of course, this is a story that will develop, and once it does, we'll cover it for you here on Worldview. So let's leave Britain alone for a while and come back to the country and focus on what has been happening on uh, NASA Corp Principal um, Kalonzo Musioka. We do know that the NGO board has uh, frozen the accounts of his foundation. He reacted yesterday saying he thinks this is a witch hunt. The NGO council has uh, gave him actually a clean bill of health on April 10th. Uh, but now he says he doesn't understand what exactly is happening. Let's speak to Eddie Orinda, human rights lawyer. Um, he's joining us uh, from Kisumu. Good afternoon, sir. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. Tell me, what are your thoughts about what's happening to Kalonzo Musioka with the NGO Council? Um, thank you for having me this afternoon. Um, a number of things come to mind, but perhaps if I could just start by giving a little background to what the legal issues surrounding the freezing of the accounts and the questions that have been raised about the foundation are. Um, under Kenyan law, foundations are registered under different regimes. And sometimes they take the form of NGOs, uh, sometimes they can be under uh, trusts um, um, regulated by the Trustees Perpetual Act, and sometimes they may be under the Companies Act in the form of uh, companies limited by guarantee. In the case of the Kalonzo Foundation, um, regulations apply based on the um, NGO uh, coordination board in which the uh, uh, Fazul Board has authority to provide oversight regarding um, the activities of non-governmental organizations in Kenya and our laws, uh, sources of funding for such organizations, how the funds that they receive are dispensed, and a broad range of compliance issues that have to be met based on the provisions that have been put within the regulations of the uh, NGO Coordination Act. Uh, so it has been uh, alleged by the uh, uh, board that the foundation has not complied in a number of things, among them failure to provide accounts of up to 146 million shillings, and they've also been charged with the possible uh, money laundering. Um, and, and, and the reaction, of course, from the foundation has been that they have complied with all these requirements and that, in fact, on the 2nd of May, sometime this week, they received a letter from the uh, uh, board confirming that they have complied. So it's an interesting turn of events prosecuting the matter over the media um, uh, regarding this compliance issue. Eddie, listen, um, just like you mentioned, there may have been a couple of issues that probably the foundation did not um, comply with as per the NGO board. But listening to Kalonzo Musioka yesterday, he said the NGO board gave the foundation a clean bill of health. That happened on April 10th. So April, May, just a, a couple of days later, the board comes again and says, we are freezing your accounts. Uh, we are trying to look into your activities. What, what, what is going on? Um, I, I think your guess is as good as mine and as good as that of the public because the problem we're dealing with is that we do not have the benefit of a lot of information that is apparently held between the board and the Kalonzo Musioka Foundation. One of the things that I was expecting um, would have happened is that um, uh, information would have been provided regarding the basis upon which court orders, if any, whether expert or not, were uh, 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 acquired by the board, enabling them to freeze the accounts of the foundation. And secondly, that you would expect that a notice of default would have been issued prior to all these events. Uh, but that doesn't quite clearly come from the board and doesn't come from the foundation either. I think the much we have had the benefit of is that they received a letter, the foundation received a letter on the second uh, uh, of this month, giving them a clean bill of health and therefore uh, 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 meeting them with a lot of surprise that uh, these charges have been raised and therefore by extension the accounts being frozen. But again, um, 
the timing may be a little suspicious, considering that uh, this is an election year. We are just under three months Eddie, Eddie. away from the... From, 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 hello? Eddie, hold on, listen. Let's still stay on the court order issue. So I can tell you for a fact, listening to Kalonzo Musioka yesterday, there was no court order. So where's the legality in all this? In the absence of a court order, there will be no basis upon which the board will walk into any financial institution or a bank and freeze accounts of a foundation. Uh, the due process of the law has to be followed. Whether they were acquired ex parte or not, those orders have to be available. That would be the basis upon which a bank would then proceed uh, to freeze accounts. And it may be argued that the board has authority particularly to follow up on uh, financing for non-governmental organizations, especially if it is suspected that it may have a negative impact on Kenya's security. But that is the purpose of the law and the regulations that such reasons, first and foremost, are issued uh, to the person against whom those charges are being directed. And in the absence of that, it would then be unlawful, um, in bad faith, um, and politically motivated uh, to freeze those accounts uh, uh, or even to, to censor the activities of the foundation. Okay. So the other thing that the board's executive director has done is that he has dissolved the entire board of directors of the foundation. Again, the board draws its powers first and foremost from the Constitution of Kenya 2010 and from the National uh, NGO Coordination Act, which I mentioned. Um, among other things, uh, they are required uh, to cooperate with the National Council of NGOs, which is a self-regulating body for non-governmental organizations in Kenya, and the Kalonzo Musioka Foundation is not an exception to, uh, uh, to that arrangement. Um, and you would expect that uh, notice would be issued, first and foremost, on the default and outlining the particular areas in which the foundation has defaulted. Uh, assuming, for instance, that returns have not been filed by the 31st of April, as required by law, they would then be put on notice and be uh, required to respond within a certain time. In the absence of that, it becomes very difficult for us to or the public indeed, to separate these recent actions from those of a political nature uh, that ordinarily the public would understand to mean um, a clipping of wings of certain uh, political personalities. All right, Eddie, finally, before I let you go, free legal advice. If you were to talk to Kalonzo Musioka, of course, the accounts of his foundation have been frozen, what would you tell him? I think the most logical thing at this point would be to uh, 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 seek redress in a court of law. Um, and the courts are open to intervene in matters like this. If you recall, uh, 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 Kidero, Evans Kidero, the governor of Nairobi, faced uh, 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 charges almost similar to those around the circumstances of the Kalonzo Musioka Foundation today, um, the basis upon which those accounts are frozen and the basis upon which uh, 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 his foundation was censored was not justified and therefore the courts lifted those orders um, and, and set them at liberty in order for them to be able to continue with their activities as provided by law. So I'm, I'm imagining if he hasn't already by 